Welcome to the Radiation Safety and Computer Tomography Virtual Symposium. I'm Tony Seibert, a medical physicist at the University of California Davis Medical Center in Sacramento, California. This presentation covers the topic entitled Scan Acquisition Settings, Trade-Offs Between Speed, Resolution, and Dose. CT scan acquisitions define the parameters and techniques to determine how the scan proceeds and include many post-scan image processing and data presentation instructions. There are many parameters set by the protocol and often adjusted by the technologist regarding the patient size or special instructions. It is important to realize that changing any one parameter may or may not change another and can have an effect on the CTDI ball and dose to the patient. In this presentation, an analysis of the trade-offs between acquisition speed determined by gantry rotation and table feed, image resolution, both spatial and contrast, and radiation dose is performed. Although CTDI vol is not patient dose, it is used as a surrogate here. There are a variety of parameters and technique settings that will be explored, including scan mode, table feed and table increment, detector configuration, pitch, exposure time per rotation, tube current, tube voltage, field of view, automatic exposure control, and reconstruction methods. The CT scan mode can be divided into three areas. Axial or sequential acquisition acquires data with the table stationary. Helical or spiral acquisition acquires image data with the table moving with respect to the collimated beam width. Dynamic acquisition acquires temporal image data at one position with the table stationary, but can be operated in a shuttle mode where the table quickly moves to a different position to image a different tissue volume and then moves back, repeating the scans over a period of time. Dynamic scan mode is used for perfusion bolus tracking and test bolus studies. Because the tube can be operated in the same position over an extended time, high radiation dose can be delivered as, as exemplified by the hair loss of a patient undergoing a CT perfusion of the head. In these situations, the CTDI vol is often reported as the sum of the CTDI vol from each rotation. It is important not to assume that the CTDI vol is the skin or organ dose, which can be smaller or larger depending upon the particulars of the study. Table feed is the movement of the table that occurs during a 360 degree tube rotation in units of millimeters per second. Table increment is the movement of the table between scans for axial or sequential acquisition. Table feed and increment affects CTDI vol through the pitch parameter as will soon be explained. The speed of the exam is related to gantry rotation time, beam collimation, pitch, and coverage. Detector configuration. With multi-detector row CT scanners, there are many selectable combinations of data channels and detector widths associated with each channel. The detector configuration determines the beam collimation width, which is equal to the product of the number of channels N and the detector width T. As shown in the diagram in the lower right, the actual beam width is larger than the active detector array because of X-ray intensity variation in the penumbra. The efficiency of X-ray utilization is a ratio of the detected beam width and the actual beam width. In general, a smaller beam collimation has a higher CTDI vol than a larger beam collimation because the efficiency of detection is less. It is important to monitor changes in CTDI vol when changing the detector configuration. This slides illustrate a comparison of a narrow total beam width on the left of 5 millimeters and a wide total beam width of 20 millimeters on the right. Since the penumbra width is the same in both cases, the efficiency of the narrow beam width setting is less, so the CTDI vol would be higher. However, in terms of radiation scatter and associated contrast resolution, an image would likely present with better contrast resolution with the narrow beam width. The number of x-rays incident on a given voxel is inversely proportional to the slice thickness. By selecting a large slice thickness, the relative noise in the image will be less as shown in the image on the left, and increased contrast and contrast to noise of large objects is improved. However, small details are averaged within the voxel, and spatial resolution will be lost. In this abdominal CT example, to get the same relative noise values would require eight times more radiation dose with the thin 0.0625 millimeter slice on the right. 
A low contrast phantom shown here demonstrates the relationship of the impact of using thinner slices and keeping the contrast to noise equal. On the left is a scan with 5 mm slice thickness using 196 MA. On the right is a scan with 2.5 mm slice thickness using 300 MA with twice the dose. Pitch is a parameter that indicates the table feed relative to the beam collimation width. For all acquisition parameters fixed except for table speed, CTDI vol is inversely proportional to pitch, where a higher pitch results in a lower CTDI vol. As with any change in acquisition parameters, the user should always verify the impact of other parameters such as tube current. Acquisition speed is directly proportional to pitch, and spatial and contrast resolution are degraded with high pitch. Pitch does have an impact on exam time, spatial resolution, and contrast resolution, and coverage of the anatomy. A pitch less than one results in some overlap of view angle. However, a high pitch with value greater than one with a high compensated MA might not deliver a low dose to the patient. And conversely, a low pitch value much less than one does not necessarily indicate that the procedure will result in a higher dose. Compared to a pitch equal to one, a pitch less than one will reduce acquisition speed and vice versa. If a patient is cooperative and can remain stationary, a low pitch is indicated. For situations that speed is of the essence, for instance, breath hold lung acquisition, a high pitch is indicated. Exposure time per rotation is the length of time that the x-ray beam is on during the rotation of the gantry. In terms of dose and acquisition speed, it follows that the CTDI ball is directly proportional, and the gantry rotation speed and exam acquisition speed are inversely proportional. The tube current, in units of milliampers, or MA for short, is the number of electrons accelerated in the X-ray tube to produce X-rays. CTDI vol is directly proportional to the tube current when all other factors are held constant. Note that the lower MA, typically less than 250, will use the small focal spot of the X-ray tube, while higher tube current settings require the use of the large focal spot. The large focal spot causes a degradation of geometric sharpness and therefore a potential loss of spatial resolution. More important is the tube current time product, known as the MAS, with units of milliampere seconds. CTDI vol is directly related to MAS. On some CT scanners, another parameter is the effective tube current time product, or effective MAS, which is the MAS divided by the pitch, and takes into account the increased dose with overlap when the pitch is less than 1, and the decreased dose with parts of the patient not being irradiated when the pitch is greater than 1. Like MAS, effective MAS is directly proportional to CTDI fall. The tube potential is the potential difference between the two electrodes in an X-ray tube with units of kilovolt, kV, or kVp, where P indicates peak. Because X-ray production efficiency is higher at higher kV, the number of X-ray photons increases, as does the overall average energy of the X-rays produced and the number of X-rays transmitted through the body. The CTDI vol is approximately proportional to the ratio squared of the change in tube potential for all other parameters fixed. The field of measurement, also known as the scan field of view, is typically expressed in millimeters. In terms of the effect on CTDI vol, there may be an increase in the CTDI vol with a decrease in the scan field of view, so it is important to monitor the CTDI vol values when changing the scan field of view. Usually determined by the selection of the scan field of view, the beam shaping filter, which may include a flat filter or a bow tie filter or both, is the component that modifies the spectrum and spatial distribution to match the characteristics of the patient. As shown in this figure, ideally the bow tie filter creates a uniform distribution of dose throughout the scan volume, as shown in the center image. And no bow tie filter left results in dose deposition near the surface of the volume, while a bow tie filter meant for a smaller diameter, shown on the right, results in higher dose deposited in the center of the volume. A summary of acquisition parameter settings are displayed in this slide. The relationship of each parameter to CTDI vol is given, and it's assumed that all other parameters are fixed. Previous parameters discussed are usually fixed during the scan. 
Many CT scanners automatically vary the technique factors according to the attenuation variability of the patient habitus, determined either by analysis of the localizer exam or by the previous slice acquisition and analysis of the noise properties of that slice. Thus, the use of dose modulation techniques can impact the CTDI ball. Automatic exposure control is what this is generically known as and typically adapts the tube current to achieve a specified image quality. It aims to deliver that image quality across a range of patient sizes as well. In terms of large versus small patients, the AEC increases CTDI ball for large patients and decreases it for small patients relative to a reference patient size. For the lateral localizer image, a conventional scan delivers a constant MA as shown by the red line where the number of x-rays transmitted to the detector array at any specific location vary as determined by the attenuation of the tissues. And the overall noise in the corresponding reconstructed axial slices likewise vary. For instance, in this example, there would be less noise in the images acquired of the lungs than the images acquired in the abdomen due to variations in transmission. Using the localizer to estimate the x-ray transmission, Automatic exposure control modulates the tube current so that the average number of transmitted x-rays at any given z position are equalized, as shown by the yellow line in terms of tube current modulation. One further step is to modulate the tube current as a function of angular position to equalize the number of x-rays transmitted per projection so that each projection in the reconstructed slice will contribute more or less equal noise, as shown by the blue line. A savings of anywhere from 10 to 40 percent in patient doses achievable with minor impact on image quality. The image quality reference parameter defines the level of tube current and thus the noise in the reconstructed image. One manufacturer uses a parameter called noise index, which is an estimate of the standard deviation of the CT numbers in a reconstructed image. The variance of the image is directly proportional to the number of x-rays detected and the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance. Thus, when changing the noise index to lower values to achieve lower noise, the image quality improves, but the dose increases by the square of the amount of noise decrease. This is exemplified here by the left image acquired with a noise index equal to 10, requiring 71 MAS. If the goal is two times lower noise, the noise index parameter can be set to 5. When the scan is reacquired using AEC, the MAS increases to 285 MAS, as shown in the image on the right, resulting in much better image quality, but with four times the CTDI ball. Reconstruction filter kernels do not directly affect dose, but spatial and contrast resolution are both affected. In the image on the left, a low-pass smoothing filter creates an image with less noise and improved contrast resolution of large objects, but a loss of detail as shown by this high-resolution detail phantom. This type of filter helps reduce the effects of noise. On the right is the same image reconstructed with a high-pass detail filter, which provides enhanced spatial resolution but greater emphasis of noise and less contrast to noise ratio. Recently introduced iterative reconstruction methods, which are optional, provide a way to reduce noise in parts of the image that possess little structure but random variation, while preserving the detail in the objects that have structure and detail. Iteration is a process of taking an initial estimate of an object, for instance the conventional filtered back projection reconstruction image, and doing a forward projection of the reconstructed image for all angles. The forward projection of the current iteration is compared with the measured projection at that same angle to create an error matrix, which is used to selectively modify the current iteration based upon statistical and model-based rules. The process is successively repeated such that the error matrix is reduced to below a desired level. Images demonstrate the ability to selectively remove noise while preserving detail. The benefits of iterative reconstruction are to lower dose to achieve acceptable image quality. The take-home points are factors that lower dose, including lower MAS and higher pitch, increase image noise and decrease contrast resolution. Factors that increase speed, including faster rotation speed of the gantry, higher pitch and larger MAS, 
reduce spatial and contrast resolution, but can reduce image blurring due to patient motion. Factors that increase spatial and contrast resolution, including thin slices, low pitch, slower rotation speed, have the impact of increasing patient dose. Automatic exposure control, also known as tube current modulation, can reduce patient dose over fixed MA technique for a given image quality. Iterative reconstruction algorithms provide significantly lower patient dose for similarly perceived image quality. Optimization of the trade-offs are a function of the many parameters and acquisition techniques that require careful consideration and clinical evaluation in a continual ongoing process. Thanks very much for your attention.